up guys, Daniel here, and today I'm gonna go over the camera review of the Sony X-Z2. Right now what you're seeing is off of the front facing camera, which shoots at 1080p. Now it does have some stabilization, and on the back there is uh, one lens, there's 19 megapixels. So this is a low light test, or a low light portion of the front facing camera to see the differences between obviously daylight and a low light like this at night. But yeah, let's move on to the interface. So you can change modes by swiping left and right, and this camera does have AI. So on the lower left, there is a little icon for you to check out, and it just lets you know that what filter is applying onto your pictures. And for the settings, there is a lot that you can go through, so that is good to have. And on the top, there is your flash options and switching to your selfie camera. You do get manual mode, and it's great that the settings or the dials are pretty much above or near the shutter button, so it's really easy to use. Now you do get extra modes with this camera. Panorama and Google Lens is pretty common on a lot of other cameras out there. You do get AR mode where it's fun to have. After maybe two or three times, you may not even go back to this mode again. Next up is creative effect where you do get this cool effect on your overall image. There are some pretty cool ones that make your picture looks really nice or creative, but again, I think it only takes a couple of times of usage before you stop using it. Next up is sound photo, which is pretty much what it sounds like. You take a picture and there's a little sound bite that plays along with that photo you took. Now bokeh mode, it's I would say it's kind of like portrait mode, but again, I think this is the most useful one out of the bunch. So after you take the picture, you do get an option to choose what kind of blur you want. There is a regular one, there is a horizontal one, and there's a vertical one. Of course, the regular one looks the best, so I'm most likely going to use that. The other one just looks weird. Now using bokeh mode while taking pictures of people, I didn't get the best results. From what I've taken, it doesn't take the best ones where it should blur out certain areas and even the edges of the human where it does leave off some kind of um, blur or weirdness going on so it's not as sharp with the edges. But I do find taking pictures of objects, it does look way better. So don't expect the greatest results from bokeh mode when taking pictures of people. Now taking regular pictures, this camera has a 19 megapixel camera and the images comes out great. It handles flares pretty well and the colors comes out more natural and less crazy, vibrant, and saturated like other phones. There is a dedicated shutter button which I do like on this camera. There is only one lens on this phone and it is pretty wide so I do like that as well. Moving on to low light, to me it took me by surprise how well it does. Out in a city with a lot of street lights and lights on buildings and such, it does get you pretty good results. So in nighttime shooting when you're out and about, your pictures will look pretty crisp. For this picture it was really dark like earlier before when you saw my dark low light intro with the front facing camera. As you can tell in the background, it is really dark and dim. Honestly, I did not expect this picture to come out that bright or that clear as well. It may not be the best low light camera, but the results from it, just as a regular point and shoot camera, no night mode, no nothing, it's pretty impressive. Now moving on to the video on this phone, the stabilization is pretty good. You can still walk and you don't see a lot of shaky handheld footage. Now when your handheld standing still and panning around, or even keeping it still, it's really good for its stabilization. From the footage, I feel like it's not the sharpest. I do like the colors and the color science, I think that is the best thing out of this camera. When it gets darker in low light situations, you can see the stabilization happening a lot more and it gets really blurry. Once it's completely dark out, the stabilization is really bad. You can tell with the lights, it looks really weird and it's trying to stabilize with the light, but you can tell it's like really blurry and low shutter speed, there is more noise going on and you can see a lot more artifacts happening. So with video, low light isn't the best on this camera, but when you're taking pictures, that's another story. It's like day and night. One thing I don't like about the camera is the placement. I always mess it up with the fingerprint reader, so it always blurs out the lens. And with working with the Osmo, you have to push it out so it doesn't see the motor. And it also stresses the motor where it has to shut down because it got really hot. And with the clamshell design, clamping this on the Osmo kind of didn't feel secure. Like it looks like it was going to pop out anytime. So I didn't really feel safe while using this phone with the Osmo. That is my overall camera review of this phone. And I do like the color coming out of this camera. 
It looks really natural and it doesn't come out super saturated like other phones. It has a dedicated shutter button so it's really easy or it feels more comfortable taking a picture with this phone. With the clamshell design, it is more comfortable handheld but once you're including a gimbal with this shooting situation, that's where a lot of problems comes in. You have to move it out far away from the main axis or where it's supposed to be because of the camera placement and if you don't do that, you can see the motor and you can see the gimbal when you're shooting video or pictures. That is my take on this camera. Let me know what you guys think. I do have links down below of these items for you to check out. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.